everybody. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through activity 8.1, parametric constraints, and this is for Project Lead the Way Intro to Engineering Design. Um, I am going to be using the Fusion 360 program as opposed to Autodesk Inventor. If you need help with Autodesk Inventor, I suggest you head over to my friend Mark McAllister's channel. He has a lot of great videos on YouTube and a lot, of, and the one he's making tonight, he's going to be uploading tonight, is on this very same topic, but it will be an Autodesk Inventor instead. So let's walk through the problem on the right hand side of the screen. You can see the word document is pulled up. We need to make this image, um, this part, excuse me. It's going to be made out of aluminum eventually. And we can see that we have a bunch of, of dimensions that have been named like overall width and depth and right height and lower hole and upper hole, things like that. But we need to build them all with parametric constraints. That means they need to be linked together as far as measurements go. When one measurement changes, other, me measure other measurements are going to change. So we are given a list in this activity of how those relationships work. And we're going to go through and we're going to start a parameters table and we're going to add in model parameters, user parameters in order to build this. And my suggestion to you, if you're new to this or if you're not comfortable with it, is to do the following. Number one, before we start building, we fill out a table. And the table is going to look like this. We're going to go up to modify and we're going to go to change parameters. It's going to bring up a table that looks like this. And you'll notice that we have a plus button under user parameters. And so what we're going to do is just click on the plus button and we're going to be given some options to add user parameters. And so I'm just going to go through and I'm going to match what the document says over here. It says the overall height of the part is two inches. So I'm going to type in overall underscore height. It's measured in inches, so that's perfect. The expression is going to be two. That's the dimension. And the comment, I don't need to leave a comment. I'm going to click OK, and it adds it to my table. And I'm going to continue to do this all the way down. So the top width, top underscore width, measured in inches, is 0 0.5. Hit Enter. Now we get to one that really starts to turn into a parametric equation, because the first two were just defined, right? 2 inches, 0.5 inches, all the time. But the right height, here's what we know, is 1 quarter of an inch less than half of the overall height. So what we're saying here is the right height's dimension depends on the overall height. So the way that we go about that then is, first of all, we have to figure out an algebraic relationship between overall height and right height. And second of all, we're not gonna type in a number in the expression category, we are going to type in a formula. Let's name it first, right height. It's gonna be measured in inches, but here's what we need to do. Okay, it says it's one quarter inch less than half of the overall height. So let's start by taking 0 0.5 times the overall. Oh, you see how that starts to auto populate? It even wants to fill in for me. It knows this is where I'm going with. So what I want you to notice is if you notice that's red, that means red is it's not recognized by the system. You have to type it perfectly. Cap case sensitive. The underscore, everything has to be perfect. If it's black, that means the system will recognize it and we're good to go. This formula would give me 50% of the overall height, the half mark, but I need to have a quarter inch less than that. So a quarter inch less seems to imply that I need to subtract, and I'm going to take off 0 0.25 inches, excuse me, 5 inches from whatever the overall height is divided by 2. Okay. You'll see that the value, according to what I have now, is going to be 0.75 inches. So it's already done the math and calculated the answer. Notice the overall height is 2. Half of that would be 1. A quarter inch less than half of that would be 1 minus a quarter inch, which would be 3 quarters of an inch. So it's already done the math and figured out this is what it's going to be this time. I'm going to continue to do that all the way down. You don't need to watch me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video right now. And in just a few seconds, whenever it glitches forward, it's going to feel like a glitch to you, but this table will be filled out with all of the formulas. Okay, welcome back. All of the parameters have been added in. You'll notice that the names and the units and the expressions are all here. Of course, you have the ability to pause the video, I suppose. So if you really needed to get that value or figure out what's going on, you could always do so. You'll notice that some of the names are a little bit long and some of the formulas get really tough. I would say the notch location formula by far is the toughest formula because you actually have to go through and figure out like how did I get the distance from the front here to this spot using just simple geometry. So what I did there is I took the overall width, 
I subtracted the notch width, and that tells me what's left. That tells me this section plus this section, but the instructions say that those have to be equal. So what I did is I said, after I subtracted the overall width minus notch width, I took that value and I cut it in half. Okay, and that told me that it's going to be half of the remaining distance is going to be that notch location. By far the toughest one. Okay, so we have all of our values here. Now the question is, what do we do? We need to build the part. Okay, so how do we build this part? And if it's me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this side profile, which is a little bit of a trapezoidal shape. I'm not going to worry about this cutout here, the notch. Okay, build this trapezoid. I'm going to work backwards. So I'm not going to build the whole part here because that video would get really long. But what I want to do is demonstrate now that we have those parameters, how do we use those? Okay, so I'm going to bake a sketch. I'm going to sketch on this plane because I want it to face the same kind of direction as, I, as it's facing in the picture on the right hand side. And I'm simply going to draw in lines. So L for line. And I can either dimension as I go or I can dimension afterward. I think it'd be pretty simple just to go over here, draw a rough shape, and bring it down. Now there are a couple of things you'll notice. I managed to get this in so it's perpendicular. This line has to be horizontal. You can see the constraint here. That's pretty convenient. You'll also notice that I managed to get a right angle here. So this line is locked in too, right? But as far as dimensioning goes, what's really awesome is I can hit D to dimension. I can click here and I could have done this as I built too, but instead of typing in a number here, I can come down. Oh, it doesn't list it to me here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna type in overall and notice it starts to autofill in its overall width, hit enter, it sets it in. Because I def designated it in the table earlier as being three inches, it's three inches here, okay? I know that, for instance, this here is the right height. So I'm gonna type in right, it's gonna autofill, it's gonna say, ah, that's the one you want, I hit enter, okay? This over here is the overall height. Once I start to type, oh, there it is right here, overall height, hit enter. And then we have the top width. Start to type top, it understands what's going on, hit enter, okay? Ah, now we have an issue here. So I needed to go through and be a little bit more careful when I was drawing my lines, okay? And maybe I wanna do a, uh, say a horizontal vertical constraint. I'm gonna lock this thing to be horizontal. And now it's completely black. That means it's completely locked down. I have the shape that I want. I'm gonna stop the sketch. I'm gonna extrude. When I go to extrude, click on the shape. I'm gonna go backwards. So that way I have the front shape is what I used, okay? And the distance that I'm going to go, notice it's negative because I'm going backwards, but I'm just gonna ch simply change this to depth. There it is right there. Click on it, hit enter. Doesn't like that, probably because it has the inches at the end. Let's try this again, negative depth. There we go. Took off the inches at the end, click okay. And my part is starting to be formed. So now you can compare to what I have over here to what I've got going on over here. And it's just the same process, right? Just every time you add a dimension, instead of typing in a number now, we're gonna type in a word and then we're gonna autofill it. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I guess I'm not gonna finish it off from here on out. I'm gonna leave that up to you. Um, but don't forget the shell on the underside and maybe, you know what I'll do? I'll go ahead and finish it off and I'm gonna pause. And when I get to the end, I'll unpause. It'll kind of glitch forward here in a second. And you can see kind of what the finished part should look like. All right, so the part is completed now. You can see, look how many steps it took me to complete all this stuff. It's not too bad. First I went through, I drew this shape, and then I extruded it. In fact, I'll just roll my history timeline back, okay? I drew the shape and then extruded it. Then I went through and I drew circles on the front, placed those, and I extruded them downward. And then I drew a shape on the bottom, a rectangle on the bottom. So I flipped it down here and I extrude it upward with a cut all the way through. And then I added a fillet right here. And then the last step is I shelled it out to make it hollow when looking at it from underneath, okay? So that's what we're getting to. The one thing that I haven't done is I have not changed the material. So I'm gonna come down here to modify and I'm going to choose physical material. This is made out of aluminum. So I need to go through here and I need to go to my metals folder. There's aluminum right there. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna drag and drop it. This is now an aluminum part. The reason that that's important, okay, is because now I can go through and I can actually figure out things about the body, okay? So I can come over here, I can right click, 
on bodies. I can click on properties and it'll tell me things like the surface area, the density, which is different than the density they have here. So I must have picked the wrong kind of aluminum. I've got the mass and I've got the volume, 3.055 cubic inches. And as a teacher, what I'm interested in is the volume piece, right? Here's what else before I quit this demonstration here because we're 10 minutes into it. Here's the last piece of it. Why is all this important? Because what I can do is I can modify, change parameters. And what we can have students do and what you can do is we can go in and we can say, you know, we have a lot of stuff here based on the overall height. This is based on the overall height. This is, this is. A lot of things change based on the overall height. So if I go through and I change, say, the overall height to 3.5 and I click OK, you will notice that many parts of this scale automatically. Now, what doesn't scale is the way we have these set up and the way they wanted us to do it. You'll notice that the holes look a little funny, right? Okay, so those are a little bit different. They don't drill down as deep. Um, they are in different places, obviously, but the fillet radius looks good. This is still centered. I go underneath, it's still shelled, and that's a pretty good shell of it, right? And so we have a scaling up and scaling down without having to change a ton of dimensions. We just change one and everything else kind of auto updates. And that's what parameters do for us. So that's kind of the idea. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if there's any of the algebra stuff that bothers you or whatever, feel free to contact me. Um, this not, video is obviously for people that I'm training to be a project lead to a teacher. Uh, if you're a student, don't bother emailing me because I probably won't answer. Good luck, and hopefully that's enough to get you going.